Hey folks, welcome to Horsemanship 101 again today. Uh, I've talked about before how uh, understanding the horse is an important part of horsemanship. Understanding the animal so that uh, you understand why it does what it does and you know when it's ex how to you know expect certain behavior from it and that type of thing. And I want to elaborate a little on that today. And uh, you know, one of the things is understanding what a horse needs to feel good. As you can see, her back's a bit wet. It's actually a rather gray day. It's not raining hard, but there's a bit of a mist in the air, and uh, this camera isn't terribly waterproof, so I uh, hope we do okay. But, as you can see, uh, the horses are all out in the middle of the pasture, and they really don't care that it's wet out. Uh, they're quite content. As I said before, uh, their coats are actually relatively waterproof, as long as you don't overgroom them. You don't have a problem. And uh, that's just one of those things. You've got to understand a horse how they're made, how they're designed, and I want to talk a bit about their senses. Uh, they have the sense of feel, uh, smell, hearing, and eyesight. And uh, their smell is actually amazingly good. They have an incredibly good nose on them, and uh, that's how they do a lot of detecting of hazards and that sort of thing. And of course they also know when i got treats in my pocket, because they can smell them. Even when I don't have them, they can smell the crumbs. Um, as you can see, their ears are basically uh, big old radar dishes that uh, can oscillate around and point at you know the sounds and decide what is and isn't safe and based on that. And it's also much more sensitive than ours. Their hearing is I don't know three four times as sensitive as ours. Uh, so if it sounds loud to you, it's incredibly loud to the horse. So don't be surprised if a loud sound startles your horse because. Uh, they don't see the world, now, I've talked about this before, our horses don't perceive the world the way we do. Uh, some of that is a, a mental issue, they just don't think like we do. Uh, a lot of it is physical, they are physically designed different than we are, and uh, uh, we don't always stop and realize the differences between us and them, we just expect the horse to see the world and perceive things and accept things the way we do, and that doesn't always work. And uh, one of the things that is... Uh, I'm going to talk about a bit today is uh, the vision in particular. And I talked a little bit about this in another video, how it's uh, good to train your horse on both sides so it doesn't become one-sided because uh, their little brain, uh, it does have some connection between left and right, but essentially it's not really well connected, not like ours. So if they see something with one eye, uh, they have to see it with the other eye too to learn what it is and accept it. Otherwise, it's an entirely new thing when they see it again with the other eye. Now, also on that note, uh, their vision is very different than ours, uh, contrary to popular belief. They're not colorblind entirely, but they do have limited vision for color. And uh, they don't uh, see colors the way we do. Uh, they have certain deficiencies, so uh, they're not entirely colorblind, but they do have a limitation. So uh, don't think that your horse is going to see all the same colors that you do. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, their vision is also very different. They don't have the ability to pick out detail um, in sight as we do, but they also have a much, much better uh, ability to uh, see movement than we do. And so that it gives them a, you know, anything moving in the grass or the bush or something, you know, that might be a threat to them. Uh, they're designed, they're, they've evolved over the years to survive and protect themselves. So. Um, and this is part of understanding how the horse works, how it physiologically sees things, how it understands what it sees, uh, dictates its behavior. So it's not always being a bad horse, uh, it's just being a horse a lot of the time. It's not doing something that uh, is anything other than what it has evolved to do, what it thinks to do for survival. And, uh, okay, you guys are getting too pushy, back off. And, uh, they don't see things the way we do. Uh, they don't have much binocular vision. There's only a few, the small area in front of them uh, where they can actually see it with the binocular vision out of both eyes at the same time. So that limit, uh, limits their depth perception. Uh, they don't have good eyesight for detail. However, uh, like I said, they're far more sensitive movement. Uh, they can see probably further away than we can. Uh, personal experiences, uh, I've seen all of a sudden all three horses, all heads pop up and uh, they're looking off at something out in the field. And you know, I, I'm looking for a long time before I finally realize, oh, there's a deer out there a mile away. And they spotted it without, a, without any problem. So 
they're capable of doing that. Uh, they also have much better night vision. I, I used to always be concerned about riding at night, thinking if I got a nervous horse to begin with, riding at night's not good because uh, thinking in human terms, I'm thinking my night vision's not that great. So, you know, it's going to be kind of spooky because I'm not going to know what's out there and, you know, something might get me and, uh, you know, kind of thing. And I'm thinking that, well, that's what the horse is seeing. But that's not true. Uh, it can be virtually black to us and a horse can still see at night. However, a horse does not adjust its eyesight uh, for different light levels as fast as ours do. They also don't refocus to different things as quickly as we do, but more importantly, uh, when it goes from light to dark or dark to light, they don't refocus like we do or readjust to the lighting. Uh, they're much, much slower, which causes uh, behavioral problems sometimes that we think is the horse being bad or dis disobedient or not listening to it. Uh, in fact, it's just simply being a horse and it's doing what it thinks it needs to do to survive. Uh, it feels like it's in a situation that's just not good for it. A uh, perfect example is trying to get a horse into a trailer. Uh, or even walking it into a barn where all of a sudden it goes from light to dark. It's not just dark, it's black to them. And it takes them quite a while for their eyes to adjust to the difference in light so that they can actually see that it's okay to go in there. And if you don't have a really, really strong leadership with your horse, uh, or your horse trusts you to go anywhere you ask it to, you're going to have a problem because the horse's instinct is going to override and say, forget it, I can't see in there, it's dark, it's black, it's scary, there could be a horse-eating monster in there, and so it's not going to go. And that's an important thing to under, uh, understand is that it cannot adjust to light like we do. So uh, in many ways, horses don't see things the way we do. They can see better in the dark than we can. They can see further away than we can. Uh, they can pick up motion better than we can. And uh, on that note of uh, vision, and I'm going to add sound to that one too, because uh, windy days, horses tend to be nervous. That's not uncommon, not unusual at all. It's a very normal uh, thing for a horse to be really nervous in windy conditions, and there's a reason for that. It's a survival instinct. And how that works is that when it's exceptionally windy, because their vision is geared towards, you know, detecting movement, you know, anything that moves, um, well, when it's windy out, everything's moving every single piece of grass and bush is moving already so they don't know what's a threat and what isn't so they get really nervous now of course you can desensitize an animal to things and uh, the more you actually work with them in the wind and the more time you spend with them uh, the less of a problem it becomes but it's not unusual it's not abnormal it's just a horse being a horse uh, the second part of that is because of their hearing is their other uh, major thing that they use to survive uh, when it's windy out, they can't hear as well, and there's noise all around them, so they can't hear a predator coming. So everything becomes a threat because the branches are all crackling, the grass is all rustling, and, you know, if, if you've ever had the wind blowing in your ears, you know how much it can affect your hearing. So if the wind's blowing in the horse's ears, uh, it's also going to affect its ability to hear, period, not to mention the fact there's all these extra noises out. So, uh, so between the extra noise that it hears, the things it can't hear, and then the fact that it's visually being impaired because everything is moving, and that's what the horse uh, picks up more than anything is movement. Uh, windy days can be really scary for a horse. But uh, like I said, you know, if your horse is acting odd uh, or acting up, in your opinion, it's not always. Sometimes it's just being a horse and doing what it has to do based on how it perceives the world, uh, both mentally as well as physically what it's capable of perceiving, either through its hearing, through its sight, through its scent. Um, there's a lot of things to consider. So learn to understand the animal, learn how to understand how it works, how it sees the world, how it perceives the world in every way, shape, and form. And uh, it'll make your life a lot easier, and it'll make it a lot easier to get along with them, because you'll understand why they do what they do, and they're not always being bad. Sometimes they're just doing what they think they need to do to survive. Okay, folks, have a good day.